Continuing with topic one, paper 12, we're now going to look at section three, participants in the fund management industry. Uh, who are these participants? Well, you can see on these two pages facing us, we've got investors, promoters, fund managers. So who are the investors? Well, it can include all sorts, individuals, employers, institutions, trustees, uh, providing money to be invested. Fund marketers, they will segment actual and potential customers by geography, demographics, or psychographics. Now, professional investors are split, and this comes from the Code of Conduct, the SFC's Code of Conduct, are split into three categories. Institutional professional investors, corporate professional investors, and individual professional investors. And each has a criteria uh, and depending on uh, the classification, uh, they are protected to more or lesser extent um, through the code of conduct. And I'll explain why in a moment. So institutional professional investors are all the big uh, players. As you can see, they are recognized exchange companies, clearing houses, exchange controllers, and on it goes. And it's not just those in Hong Kong, but overseas as well. And you can see the last bullet point under institutional, automatically entitled to all code of conduct exemptions. So there's certain code of conduct aspects that uh, the provider is exempt from applying to institutional professional investors. That is because they do not need the same protection as retail investors. Corporate professional investors, uh, they're defined as holding a portfolio of not less than 8 million Hong Kong, that is corporations, or total assets, not less than 40 million Hong Kong dollars. Uh, now, the asset fund manager or the distributor to treat them as a corporate professional investor should be satisfied that they have the appropriate structure, processes, etc., now, for the corporate professional investors, for example, many family offices, the intermediaries uh, satisfying the criteria we've just looked at, they're entitled, again, to some code of conduct exemptions. Whereas the individual professional investors, these are individuals portfolio of not less than 8 million Hong Kong dollars. Here, the asset managers, distributors have to obtain signed declaration from the client uh, showing that they know uh, that they are being treated as a professional investor and they have to fully explain to the client the consequences of being treated such. Um, intermediaries who serve inter individual PIs cannot be exempt from code of conduct requirements fundamental to investor protection. Now, that's fairly broad on other SFC papers. They go into the different code of conduct exemptions in a lot of detail. At Paper 12, we don't have to worry about that. What you must realise, institutional and corporate professional investors don't require the same amount of protection as individual professional investors. And generally, professional investors do not need as much protection as retail investors. Moving on to promoters 3.2, who are promoters? They design, develop, maintain management fund products uh, involving promoting the products, either directly or via distributors, selecting the fund managers and the administrators of the managed product. Now, those tasks can be outsourced or conducted in-house. Now, typical promoters of fund products, banks, life insurance companies, investment banks, specialized management, managed fund companies, and some retirement fund trustees. So what about the fund managers themselves? Well, they set investment objectives, the strategy, define the management style, make, implement investment decision. They are ultimately responsible for the performance of the fund. Okay, so in a uh, fund manager business, uh, what positions are required in attempting to outperform the market? And here they are. Be aware of them. They could be picked up in the exam. Chief investment officer, strategists, economists, portfolio managers, analysts, dealers, compliance officer. And we've given you details of the roles of each of those parties. Now, the fund managers generally incorporated companies, including subsidiaries of investment banks, often the case, commercial banks, insurance companies, and stockbrokers. 
Some are set up independently as specialists or boutique managers. And the fund management companies must be independent of the trustee, have paid up capital of a certain amount, uh, always maintain positive net assets and have qualified executive directors. Let's continue on to the next page, and we're now considering trustee companies. Well, trustee companies deal with unit trusts. So in Hong Kong, unit trusts must have a trustee. Uh, the promoters, the fund managers, are the ones that nominate the trustee company to perform those duties. And trustees must be independent of managed fund provider, and they should have a paid up share capital of at least 10 million Hong Kong dollars. If there are if they are overseas trustees, the SFC must authorize them. Most likely in Hong Kong, uh, the trustee to be uh, a trust company uh, or an AFI, Authorized Financial Institution, a bank. Uh, to be frank, the vast majority in Hong Kong are banks, the big banks. What does the trustee do? As a custodian, it looks after the fund assets, uh, registry, maintains register of the unit holders. Um, it helps with settlement of transactions by issuing and redeeming the fund units, ensures fund provider complies with conditions that are stated in the trustee. This is to do with trusts. It will act in the interests of unit holders and will liaise with the management company, the fund management company, on behalf of the investors, the unit holders. Uh, the trustee company can charge a service fee. The next participant in the fund management industry, distributors, well, they distribute the product, the, the managed funds to clients on behalf of the promoters, two types, direct, they directly promote uh, and they can be a subsidiary of the promoter, indirect uh, distributors distributing through an intermediary, which is not the fund management company. And the intermediaries can include IFAs, life insurance agents, banks, discount brokers, accountants and solicitors, and asset consultants. Other supporting participants, we see actuaries, accountants, custodians, fund research, houses and fund rating agencies, credit rating agencies. Uh, be aware of what each of these do. Um, actuaries uh, tend to be linked to life insurance companies uh, designing defined benefit retirement funds. Accountants will advise on tax auditing. Custodians will look after investments, especially for mutual funds. Fund research houses and fund rating agencies provide analysis, information, uh, and obviously ratings, uh, as do the credit rating agencies. Read through the detail. Uh, any one of those could be the subject of a question. And just summarizing in a diagram, and the roles of the different parties in a management fund world well, here, we're looking at unit trusts as opposed to mutual funds. You've got the trust unit holder, that's the investor, uh, and will own a unit trust, well, a number of units in a unit trust. And the trustee holds the units on behalf of the unit holders. It's the trustee, the bank that will look after them. And it's the fund manager that manages the money in the unit trust. The trustee, in turn, will supervise the fund manager. So what about the different distribution channels? Well, distribution aims to deliver right product, right place, the right time. Uh, it's a set of marketing intermediaries that operate between the managed funds uh, provider and the customer and can involve a number of players. Uh, market share of distribution channels, well, we're told in Hong Kong, retail fund distribution is dominated by the banking sector. Uh, other fund distribution channels in Hong Kong, investment-linked insurance products, along with online platforms, fund of funds, master trusts, and insurance companies. And we're told a small number of asset managers do distribute directly to the markets, uh, and that can be um, helped along with technology platforms, etc. Now, following recommendations were made by Hong Kong Financial Services Development Council to enhance Hong Kong's status as a fund distribution center for Asia Pacific. So here's uh, a list of bullet points that would be easy to write a question for. Uh, the, looking for support to diversification of fund distribution and innovation through new online platforms. 
provide additional guidance on know your client KYC rules. They want uh, fintech to enhance the KYC process. They want to continue to engage with develop cross-border initiatives with mainland China and other Asia Pacific countries. Well, that's been uh, recommended and there's no doubt that that is ongoing. Now, direct distribution, I touched on this just a moment ago, that the technology is improving efficiency, effectiveness, management fund products. So through platforms, you can go straight to the fund provider as opposed to going through distributors. However, some investors still prefer face-to-face -face dealing with investment professionals, the intermediaries, to give them advice. And many managed fund providers have not taken to direct distribution over the internet. It, it's, it, it's increasing in um, incidents, but uh, as it says there, many people like dealing with investment professionals. Insurance companies, investment-linked insurance products uh, are very much part of long-term saving plans. And if you are ever to sit insurance exams, uh, there's whole papers on those products. Well, that brings us to the end of topic one of paper 12, and that's an overview of fund management and fund managers. Uh, you will get a number of questions and you can see uh, that they will be narrative in nature. Uh, there's no calculations required. Uh, it's not difficult material, uh, so I would, uh, I would get to grips with it. And as ever, uh, by doing question practice, you will build up your short-term memory uh, to enable you to perform at paper 12. Uh, I would once again recommend that you go to examinator.online uh, under the HKSI tab and you will find paper 12 uh, where we have got uh, many, many questions over the four topics.